Hey, so what's up YouTube? Welcome back to a brand new video. Episode 14 of the bulking series is here. Hello, Dodo. Hello. So we're cooking breakfast right now. Well, not breakfast, technically lunch. Making up a little bit of a meal before the gym. I've got some beef here. Just frying this up in the pan. That's gonna be our protein. And then with the protein, I'm gonna do a smoothie as well for some carbs. So let's make it. Beef is ready. And we've got the most underrated condiment in the game, French's yellow mustard, basically zero calories. And even though we're bulking and we need those calories, it's good to make sure that stuff like sauces with excess sugar and oil isn't really where we get the bulk of our calories from. We wanna be getting it from whole foods like beef, rice, etc. Now, what would one of my videos be if we didn't make a smoothie? So, Today's smoothie is gonna have some orange juice in it. Slightly different recipe than normal. Freshly squeezed only. Frozen mango. Any oatmeal, just the cheapest you can find. And of course, the last banana from the fruit bowl. Kobe, final two ingredients, which are optional, is honey and chia seeds. Let's go. One banana, we're gonna do the whole bag of mango. That's 300 grams. Gonna eyeball it, but I'm gonna do about 12 ounces of orange juice. I'm also gonna eyeball the oatmeal, but this is gonna be about 50 to 60 grams. Lastly, a few chia seeds and just a squirt of honey. Top that off with some water and it's time to blend. Now that is a seriously anabolic and delicious breakfast. No, lunch. And look, for anyone watching this who's thinking, ew, mustard on beef, that's a gross combination. Try it, I promise you, it's actually good. And it's a lot better than ketchup when you have to have it every single day, trust me. All right guys, it is time to get ready for the gym. I don't necessarily know what I'm gonna wear, so let me pick something out here. I think I'm gonna go with this. All right, we got some Young LA sweatpants. Ooh, and we got this classic bodybuilding style Young LA tank. And now we're ready for the gym. Let's get out of here. Gonna bring a hoodie with me because it is starting to get cold here and I need to get warmed up for the gym. What do you want? What do you want? Guys, if you ever wanna upgrade your gym drip, all the gym clothing I wear is from Young LA. And you guys can use my code Lee for 15% off everything. And it's a good way to support me as a creator. Now let's get out of here. A few minutes later. Okay, got the hoodie on. That's a little bit better. Now it's eight o'clock PM right now. So we're gonna have about an hour to get this workout in. So right now I train between four to five days a week. And some of you might think, oh, that doesn't sound like that much. I go to the gym pretty much every day, you know, talking about yourself. But for me, because I've been training for about four years, I'm able to kind of understand my body's natural recovery and energy levels. So when I feel somewhat fatigued going into a workout, that sometimes tells me that I might not be fully recovered. Now, recovery is so important because your body has this thing called the central nervous system. And the central nervous system, essentially what dictates your total amount of energy that you have to output. So the worse like recovered your central nervous system is, the less like force and vigor and strength you'll be able to generate when you're in the gym. For example, if you do a super heavy one rep max deadlift, it takes all your energy when to get that lift done. That will deplete your central nervous system for a long time. Like it'll take you a week to fully recuperate your maximum energy levels. And training to failure, it can be similarly taxing on that central nervous system. So the way you recover is super important for dictating your future workouts. So now I don't train like Monday I do chest, Tuesday I do legs, because that doesn't account for my recovery. Some weeks my sleep is better, some weeks my sleep is worse. And so I don't like to just go on a structured weekly program every time having it be the same. What I do now is I manually switch it up based on my recovery levels. So if you guys are ever feeling weak, you're feeling lethargic, you don't have as much energy, try taking an extra rest day and your workouts will improve. All right guys, we're in the gym. Just gonna get after it. No plan whatsoever today. I'm gonna go off program and just train whatever I want. So let's get after it.
So I'm feeling like a good chest day will be satisfying today. So what I'm gonna do is warm up on dips. Maybe just like two quick little sets to get some blood in my chest and my shoulders. And then once that's done, I'm gonna move into incline dumbbell bench to prioritize that upper chest because that's a muscle group that I have to work on. I like to do those first couple of sets with my hoodie still on. It keeps me warm and increases blood flow to the muscles that I wanna stay warm, but that I wanna keep warm like my shoulders. The warmer a muscle is, the lower the risk of injury. If you start lifting heavy weights with like cold muscles, cold joints, you're more at risk. So the dumbbells feel a little bit heavy today, but regardless, we're still gonna get after it. I'm gonna do one more set to failure, and then we're gonna move on to the next exercise. So if you guys pay really close attention when I'm going through the motion of the incline dumbbell bench, it's almost like a slow eccentric contraction. So I'm taking like three full seconds to bring the dumbbells down to my chest. And what this does is it almost forces you to properly engage your chest and not use other muscles. You need to like basically stabilize the dumbbell and almost stop it from coming down to your chest faster. And if you drop the weight and try to just focus on the floor more, especially on this exercise, your overall chest development will see so much better gains. So second exercise, because we just did a press, now I wanna go into more of a fly variation for that squeeze motion. So we're gonna do some cable chest flies. Cables are really good because they provide resistance for the entire time. The burn I get on this exercise and the squeeze is unlike any other movement I have ever done. Like for mind to muscle connection, I absolutely love flies. They might not be the best for overall hypertrophy and strength, but man, do they feel good. Now I know I already did some dips, but I wanna do some more and just really focus on them, not just do them as a warm up. So I'm gonna do like two more sets of dips and then my chest should be cooked. So I just did nine sets in total for my chest and I'm done. That is all you need to grow a big chest. You don't need to be in here for like two hours. Literally two sets, maybe three to failure on three really good exercises. Do that twice a week, you're good. No, we're not done. Still wanna do some other accessories, but my chest is absolutely cooked. Recently, I've been doing these single arm lateral raises with a chest support. It's not really a chest support. It's just kind of like at your chest, you can grab a bench and helps you like better isolate one shoulder at a time. If you get like a slightly heavier dumbbell, they actually feel really good. And you can like look at your form in the mirror and it's just, give them a try. Walking past the bar right now. 
Sorry guys, I'm bulking. So you guys just saw that pump was unbelievable. Chest pump mixed with a few uh, side lateral raises for the shoulders. Just gives you like an insane look. Bulk is definitely paying off. I don't care what anyone says. Body weight hasn't moved a tremendous amount, but I am definitely getting bigger and uh, I'm feeling good. So it's only nine o'clock now because the gym closes early on Saturdays. So we actually have quite a bit of time to get some food in. So I'm gonna go make a post-workout meal, get some carbs, some protein. I'll see you guys in there. Hey. All right guys, so we're back. I just preheated the oven. This is gonna be my post-workout meal. And then just to get some extra protein. Oh. Just kidding. So I've got these little like breaded chicken breast pieces. I'm just gonna put literally a whole pack into a pan. Oven is nice and hot, so those shouldn't take too long. And because those have like a breading, like a coating on them, I'm not gonna worry too much about carbs for this meal. I'll just get more in during the next one. Alright, so there's been a little bit of a debate going around on my channel. You guys have seen me doing Coke Zero a lot in my recent meals. Now, a ton of you are apparently you're partial or you're impartial, whatever the saying is, to Pepsi. And I didn't really believe the hype, but I've gotten so many in inquiries about it that I went and got some Pepsi, so we're gonna settle this debate. Now, by the way, if any of you guys are ever worried about diet soda, you might think, oh, don't drink that crap. Even though it's diet, has no sugar, it's not good for you. Most of the studies that have been conducted on sweetened beverages with artificial sweeteners, most of them show that you need a pretty large amount of these artificial sweeteners to actually have them be dangerous to humans. They usually do them in rodent models, meaning they use like mice or rats or whatever to test the chemicals on. And the general takeaway is as long as you're not drinking like five of these two liter bottles a day you're gonna be completely fine with a little bit of diet soda as long as it helps you stay on track with your diet all right this is the official Pepsi taste review we're gonna see if this is better than coke whoa there's a very distinctive flavor there you definitely know that that's not coke wow that is good as good as that is, I still think I prefer Coke. Something about like the initial taste of the Pepsi is weird to me, but very, very close second for the Pepsi. Chicken is done. I know that this girl really wants some, but fortunately that's for me. At this point it's getting like excessive, but I think honey on chicken strips is like really good. Look at this guys. Get your chicken strip, squirt some honey on there. Just go like this. Mmm. It's good. Anyways, that's the post-workout meal. I'm gonna take that down. See you guys in a bit. So I feel like I just ate that meal literally less than an hour ago and I already have to eat again. Probably the number one hardest thing mentally on a bulk is just the fact that you need to go against the grain of your own human physiology. And instead of listening to your body's hormones, like the ghrelin hormone in your body that determines your appetite, you need to listen to your brain and just go eat, even if you don't want to. Like it's such a weird feeling not being hungry and needing to eat. Like it's, there's nothing like it. I am excited though, because I got that chipotle mayo, like you guys saw on my chicken. Maybe I didn't show you that, but a new sauce is always fun to like switch up your meals. I'm gonna try that on my beef and rice, but yeah, let's go cook another meal. Check this out, you guys. I got this like giant size bag of rice. Now it's kind of empty now, but like it's a huge, like almost a 10 kilogram bag of rice. It's so cheap to buy rice like in bulk. If you get it in smaller packages, you're essentially getting upcharged for the premium of the convenience of that small package. Like if you buy ready-made rice packets, those are like literally $1.50 a pack. If you buy something like that, you're maybe getting 300 servings of the same amount of rice for like a 50th of the price per serving. It's ridiculous. Okay, we got our washed rice, no starch left on that. Crazy fact I learned recently for you guys about rice. 
Apparently the reason you're supposed to wash white rice before you cook it, there's arsenic in rice, I guess. And when you rinse it off, it takes away most of that arsenic and makes it like, I guess just safer to eat. Interesting. So I got my food skill here. I'm gonna put on my measuring device and then I'm gonna zero the scale so that it doesn't pick this up as a part of the weight. I have 270 grams of rice in the pot. So I'm gonna do 540 grams of water. Add that in. And because we're probably a little bit dehydrated after that workout, I'm gonna get a good amount of a high quality. Now this is not just some random table salt. This is like a high quality sea salt. It's got minerals in it. I'm gonna put that in the rice. It's important to remember that hydration doesn't just come from water. You need to have minerals in the water you're drinking as well. So if you're not intaking adequate potassium, magnesium, sodium, those types of things, even if you drink like a gallon of water, you're not gonna be optimally hydrated. I'll also sometimes get headaches like when I'm doing a hard training session, especially on my leg days. And that's a really good telltale sign that I'm dehydrated or I just don't have enough minerals in me at the moment. Usually that's, uh, those, are, those two things are correlated. All right, so looks like we've got more beef on the menu, nice. I promise none of you will ever beat me in Brawl Stars. It's just a fact. I'm the highest rated Brawl Stars young LA athlete on the planet. So if you guys were thinking you could top me, I would quit now. Wow, man. Uh... Damn. Am I weird or does everyone else have that one bowl or that one plate in your house that you always eat all your meals out of? And it just feels right. It feels right. Like unless the meal is in this specific bowl, it just ain't right. Especially when you're bulking, like they'll switch between cutting and bulking. Whatever my goals are, the actual object is different. Boom, another meal. This shit right here, sriracha chili mayo sauce. Are you kidding me? Insane. I'm just gonna take this, squirt it all over. Just gonna elevate this meal. Hello, doggy. Hello. There's fireworks here right now because it's getting close to Halloween, so my dog has been stressed out all day. All right guys, so I may have just gotten one of the better ideas I've had in a while. Okay, so here's the idea. So Gorilla makes this product called Gorilla Mind Collagen Peptides. So collagen is probably one of the most underrated supplements. Not probably, it is the most underrated supplement in the bodybuilding space. Now the, the one thing that collagen is good for when it comes to bodybuilding is your joints. So when you guys have been lifting for like a couple of years, you know that when you go heavy and you're training like four or five, six days a week, you start to get that like fatigue in your elbows, your knees over time. Like your wrists are a little achy, all your kind of joints feel sore and it can sometimes make it harder to progress in the gym without having a higher risk of injury. But a high quality collagen supplement is extremely helpful at preventing this. Basically just keeps everything well lubricated, nice and safe. So I've been taking this a lot and it's been honestly making me feel a lot better. Now this flavor is pina colada and you guys know I love a good smoothie and I could do with a little bit more fruit in my daily micronutrient cap. So I'm gonna make a smoothie with the collagen. All right guys, so we got frozen watermelon, frozen strawberries, and frozen pineapple in a blender. I'm also gonna throw in some orange juice, not a ton, but just to give it like a little extra sweetness. 
Now the best thing to do is add in the collagen once it's done blending. If you put the collagen in first, it gets this kind of like weird frothy texture. Putting it in at the end makes it blend smooth. So there we go, it's got this really nice, smooth, almost like chalky texture because it's like basically micronized. And I'm just gonna pop that in. Boom, this is pina colada flavor. So it's got that coconut pineapple vibe to it, just like the smoothie. Now let's finish blending. Wow, look at that. Guys, look at that. Perfect, it's like frothy, icy. Mm. Oh wow, it is actually really good. It's like I'm on the beach in Mexico. <laughs> And without even thinking about it, I'm gonna get all those collagen benefits. So super dope supplement. If you guys wanna try that, I will put a link to Gorilla in the description. Make sure you use code Lee. That'll save you guys 10% off anything you buy from Gorilla as well. Final snack of the night. I got these little packets of seaweed. They have literally no calories whatsoever, but it's something salty to munch on while I have my smoothie. All right guys, that's gonna be the end of this YouTube video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out.